so you saw this pendulum demo. Let me show you one more demo that's uh, kind of my favorite. And this is the video that I uh, couldn't, I didn't have a good quality video from my lecture. Uh, yeah, lecture uh, last uh, semester I taught this class. So um, this is a setup called, sometimes referred to as a Newton's Cradle. If you haven't seen what a Newton's Cradle is, let me just show you a, a Newton's Cradle. This is, oh, yeah, that's a myth was the video. Um, this is, um, um, I, I guess I can show this in the lab. Uh, we have a demo like this in, in, in the, uh, <laughs> a physical demo in class, so I can show you that. So this is Newton's Cradle. It's kind of fun. Um, it's a fun toy. <laughs> and, um, this is, uh, uh, I think this is an excellent way to illustrate conservation of energy. So this is a simulation version of Newton's cradle. So let me show you what it looks like. Let's see, air resistance is off. Um, so um, I'll do here what, what you saw that uh, illustration do. So let me pull one of these masses off to the side and let go. And this is what is happening. Oh, wait, that didn't look right. Um, let me redo it. Let's see. Hmm, something is off. Okay, so this is Newton's cradle, which <laughs> now seems to be approximating real world well. Um, so this is the material. Um, so these things collide in a kind of an elastic way, by which I mean, it conserves energy fairly well. Um, so this, um, this illustrates kind of, uh, uh, once again, illustrates uh, the idea of conservation of energy. So when I lift this ball up, so at this point, position, uh, it has more energy. And without knowing too much about physics, here's one way in which you kind of know that this has energy. It's like a wrecking ball. When you lift up a wrecking ball, then and you let go, then it swings down. When it returns to the bottom, then it's moving. It's more energetic. <laughs> so that's how I know this now has more energy. And as this ball swings down, well, let's, uh, uh, let's see what happens. So you see this transfer of energy. So, um, oh yeah, air resistance. So let me get rid of air resistance. Um, well, so by this is what I mean by transfer. Let me make the simulation slower so that I have more time to talk. So this, uh, let me call this ball one. Ball one starts out with energy. As it swings down, it, this potential energy, <laughs> the oscillator, put, turns into kinetic energy. And that energy is transferred into other balls. So you see this collision um, that happens in a row. As this collides into the second ball, it's transferring its energy into second, third, fourth, and now this fifth ball now has all the kinetic energy, it swings out. So that's what you see as a, so when you see here, this is what I mean by, you can see that energy is conserved. This ball number one started out with all the energy. At this point here, the ball number five now has all the energy, the other balls are rest. And as these move back and forth, you see the energy transferring back and forth between these balls. And there's an aspect of this that's a bit um, non-ideal. And I can, and because of this non-ideal nature, you can see that over time, these balls kind of come to rest and, um, that's sort of what you see here. So I can get rid of some of the non-ideal aspects here that'll, um, I think I'm to stop. That'll um, help make this motion last longer. One is the air resistance that I was talking about earlier. Without air resistance, you will see that um, these collisions, they last for longer. So let me pull this out here. And when I let go, then, oh, I guess I shouldn't have slowed it down. I don't know why I did. 
um, you will see that this collision back and forth um, now goes on for longer. But um, it also, again, eventually stops. And I was, this is what I was troubleshooting before this virtual class session. And uh, so because it's a simulation, we can do things that we can't do in real world, which is getting rid of air, which is making the collisions 100% elastic. And um, what I figured out is that there's a friction in these chains. So what I need to get rid of is the friction in the chains. Get rid of all the friction and make a restitution one for the chain here. This will make the, this will make the swinging back and forth motion more ideal. As these chains rub against each other, there will be much less loss of mechanical energy. So let's try that and see what happens. All right, so uh, let me make it run at normal speed and pull this out and then let go. Yeah, and you see that um, when I have energy conserved, this uh, transfer of energy happens more in an orderly way. It, um, so in the perfect ideal scenario where everything's lined up and is there still energy lost? Uh, all right. In a perfect ideal scenario where everything's lined up and there's no imperfection that leads to loss of mechanical energy, this is what you would see. Uh, you would see when this ball swings down, you would see this ball come to a perfect stop. And all the motion happens only with the fifth ball on the very right. Um, now, because it's not perfectly ideal, these are still moving around a little bit, but when everything's lined up, it all works perfectly. Um, you'll see that. Um, uh, let me have them come to a stop. Now, here's one kind of, an, um, um, one kind of an oddity that uh, I hope um, people would wonder about. So, I was talking about conservation of energy, that when I release this ball, then it's swinging down and then ball number five, ball number five coming out represents transfer of energy. So, and uh, when you look at what height they reach, the ball number five reaches the same height that ball number one started from. So that's uh, because en energy is conserved. But one thing one could wonder is, um, that that's not the only way to conserve energy. Um, if I let this swing down, here's another way to conserve energy. Another way you can conserve energy is by having two balls come out, but as two balls come out, just not have them reach the same height that ball number one did. Have them come up to some intermediate height where so that the total energy is conserved and, um, and uh, should be all good, right? <laughs> and uh, you saw me earlier trying this simulation, seeing that and freaking out that that's not how it should happen. And um, what I want to say is that that illustrates conservation of uh, another quantity that you are going to look at next week. So as you see this swing down, the reason only one ball comes out and only one ball should come out is because that's the only arrangement that conserves both energy and the second quantity that you are going to look at next to it, which you can look ahead by looking at the text in the chapter. So uh, with this simulation still here, let me just to show you uh, one more fun thing that I can show with this simulation. Um, it's a, and this is kind of why Newton's uh, cradle is a fun toy. Um, so you can see that uh, you swing, let one ball swing down, one ball comes out. Let's see what happens if I let two balls swing down. So I have two balls here. Uh, I'll have to kind of do it carefully. Okay, I have two balls. And when I let this swing down, just guess for yourself what you will see. And let's see what happens. Two ball comes out. All right, and I would say, so, um, on, here's a, another way, another arrangement where you can have energy conserved. 
as these two balls collide, instead of another two balls coming out, you could have, the, have had a single ball come out and have that single ball go to twice the height. That would still conserve energy. But that didn't happen. You had an arrangement where two balls come out at the same speed that these two balls came in. And that's because, once again, um, this particular arrangement respects conservation of energy. And one other thing that um, needs to be simultaneously conserved with energy. And the only arrangement in which that could work is by having two balls come out. Now, I'll try just two more fun things. What if I had three balls come in? Then how many balls do you think will come out? Because I can't hear your answer, but <laughs> answer that for yourself and now watch. Three balls come out. You know, it, it's a, uh, um, um, so the one in the middle, um, it kind of carries on its uh, initial energy uh, on, it doesn't actually <laughs> lose its energy. Uh, let's try one more. What if you have four balls come in? So how many balls do you think will come out? At this point, most people know the correct answer, but let's try it anyway. Yeah, four balls come out. You know, Newton's cradle, if you can get one, it's a fun toy. <laughs> it's a nice physics toy. And finally, uh, this is kind of a trivial scenario, but what if you had five balls come in? Then, oops. Uh, All right, uh, that's one downside to the simulation. At some point, it kind of becomes unrealistic. Okay, if you had the five balls come in, let's see what happens. Five balls go out. I mean, it's a bit of a silly, um, trivial scenario, but it does happen. Um, 